let's all stand and turn to hymn number 320. Then when we're done singing through, we'll sing through Jesus' name above all names on 320 twice. And then we'll turn back one page to 317 and sing there's something about that name. several requests. First of all, um, let's pray for Brother Mark and Edith. Uh, Mark is over at the ER right now. They found something in his blood work, and so they're checking that out. Probably going to be some sort of an infection or something like that. So let's just pray uh, for them and lift them up in prayer. Uh, other prayer requests that we have here today? Autumn and Devin. Autumn and Devin. Joy Church. Okay. All right. Okay. Yeah, I saw that. Let's pray for her. Um, Ben's niece can remember her in prayer. Who else? Remember Lori if she continues to recover. Okay. All right, who else? Yeah, boy, it's good to see Jim. I told him he looks a whole lot better. <laughs> Unspoken, other unspoken. Hey, just so everybody know, I love me some Jim Weaver, okay? All right. Anybody else? Remember all of our family that's traveling home today. Okay. And appreciate all the prayers and uh, all the ones that was able to come yesterday. All right. Well, then remember Glenn and 
his family, <coughs> lost his brother Ray. My family and I would be present at the funeral. Celebration. When you said your family and I, I thought about you and Richard, too. <laughs> 17. I don't blame him. Mr. <laughs> 17, I don't blame him. <laughs> okay, let's go to in prayer. Will you? Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you, Lord, for the sunshine. We thank you for all the many blessings of God that we have in our life. The blessings abound, Lord, and you're so good to us. And we just want to pause right now, Lord, and thank you for that. God, we want to lift up these concerns that we have, Lord, these prayer requests, Lord, there's folks hurting, and God, we pray you'll have compassion on them. Lord, I pray that you'll be with the ones that are sick, the shut-in. God, you know exactly what needs to be done. You know the touch that they need, God, and so we pray that your will would be accomplished. Lord, if you choose to use some of us, we gladly accept that challenge, yes, Lord. and God, that we might be obedient to you. Father, go with us into this service, Lord. Let your name be praised. Let us worship you today, God, in spirit and truth. This we ask in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Let's all stand again and turn to hymn number 314.
great? Amen. We're going to go ahead and get into our praise song. The title of it is Your Name. Uh, Christy Pruitt is not with us today. She's a big part of this, but, uh, but we'll be okay. You, you guys come on. And immediately following the praise song, we'll dismiss for children's church uh, and or nursery. I think T.C. and Christy are doing children's church today.
I said it before the song. Children's church, I'm sorry. No, I said after the song. I'm sorry, you're right and I'm wrong. Five years and I finally learned. <laughs> you take your Bibles today and turn to the book of Acts. Acts chapter 4. I'm going to read verses 7 and 12 in just a minute. I appreciate everybody's uh, uh, support and kindness and understanding uh, with me, um, with us having our family in, and uh, so surely we are enjoying that, and uh, we really have no idea when this could possibly happen again, so I'm trying to love every minute of it. I didn't say I was lo loving every minute of it, I said I'm trying to love every minute of it. Like when I volunteered to sleep on a twin-size air mattress. I wasn't loving that. <laughs> Every time I'd fall asleep, I'd roll off. Roll over top of the dog, and she'd squeal, and I'd squeal. And I said, this ain't going to work right here. But uh, we're just having a good time. All right, you found Acts chapter 4, and we're going to read verses 7 and 12 in just a moment. But I want us to consider this fact here that Peter and John uh, in this story was doing exactly what they were supposed to be doing. And they were doing exactly what you and I must do. You say, I don't want to, but we must. It's not an option. It's not something that you and I can say, well, I'm not called to do that. Because what they were doing, they were preaching Jesus crucified and resurrected. And as they preached him resurrected, that's exactly what the command for the church to do is to preach Jesus resurrected. We as Christians, when I think about this, it just blows my mind. As a believer in the Lord Jesus Christ, I've not even died yet, but I'm already resurrected. <laughs> You see, for the believer, we live for eternity in heaven with Jesus. For he promised that he had come back. They were looking for it. They were looking for the second coming of Jesus already. And you and I need to be looking for the second coming of Christ. In fact, our lives should be lived behind the lens of the resurrection. Everything we see... Everything we look at, every, everything we experience, whether it's trials or trouble, whether it's good things or bad things, everything we look at needs to be done so behind the lens of the resurrection. No matter what's happened or what we're going through, Jesus resurrected. He's not dead, and he's alive, and so that ought to change the way we look at things, and I can testify I can testify this morning that it changes everything. Yes. Well, sure, I still get down and I get discouraged. But I'll tell you what, it always brings you back when you look through the lens of the resurrection. Amen. So here in the early church, leaders uh, began preaching Jesus resurrected and they were arrested because, they were, because they'd done so. And so um, we find here on the next day, is where our story begins here in verse 7. So Acts chapter 4, beginning in verse 7, the Bible says, And when they had set them in the midst, they asked them, By what power or by what name have you done this? Then Peter, filled with the Holy Ghost, said unto them, You rulers of the people and elders of Israel, if we this day be examined of the good deed done by the impotent or the helpless man, by what means... He is made whole. Be it known, verse 10, and to you all, that to all the people of Israel, that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, 
whom God raised from the dead, even by him doth this man stand here before you whole. Verse 11. This is the stone which was set at naught of you builders, which is become the head or the chief cornerstone. Neither, verse 12, is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men, whereby we must be saved. By all outward measures, Christianity, the movement of the believers of Christ, the followers of Jesus, was very, very weak at this moment in time. It was in its infancy. It had just started. These folks now are living in a new age, a new time. And guess what? You and I are still living in that same time. We're still looking for the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. They were few in numbers. They were inexperienced in leadership. They wasn't sure uh, what all they were supposed to be doing. They were doing the best they could, like many of us do today. But they were led by the Holy Spirit. The key, when the Bible says that Peter was full of the Holy Ghost, he was full uh, and being led by the Spirit of God. Church, have you found this morning that when you do things after you're led by the Spirit of God in the power of the Spirit of God, uh, when, you, when you say things by the power of the Spirit of God, you usually do them right, you usually do them good. It's always when we kind of get over here away from the Spirit of God is when we get in trouble. Every time I ever stuck my foot in my mouth, it's because I was on my own. And I do it quite frequently. Mm-hmm. I, figured somebody good, I figured somebody would agree with that. They were inexperienced. They, they were commanded not to fight back. They were being arrested. Man, if, man, if I was there, boy, I'd put some Hong Kong fooey on them. I mean, I wouldn't, I wouldn't want to go just, okay. But that's what they were told to do. They were told at that time that they were not to be militant, that they're not to resist and all that. They were opposed by institutions that had ex- existed for hundreds of years. And those institutions, the church as they knew it then, the synagogue, the Jewish faith, opposed the new church. So here we have Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, and he began preaching a sermon that would change everything. This, from now on, would change everything. Everything's different. Everything's different. Nothing would ever be the same. Because everything from this point on is looked at through the resurrection. Everything. Peter began to answer the question that was posed to him in verse 7. See, they arrested him for preaching the resurrection. And they let him out the next day. But they said, how do you heal this man? How has this man become whole? In verse 7, they asked the question, By what power or by what name have you done this? What power and by what name have you healed this man? And Peter said, this man is whole because Jesus is alive. And today, folks, we don't serve a dead God. We serve a living God. That name by which all men must be saved. The name of Jesus is so so powerful. You remember over in Acts uh, chapter 2, verse 38, the Bible says that Peter said to them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. What a name. What a name that name Jesus is. Philippians 2.10 says that at the, same, that at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow of things of heaven and of things of earth and things under the earth. All things will bow. Every person, every living thing today that says, I refuse to bow at the throne of God through Jesus Christ, the Bible says that one day, one day they will bow. I pray to God that everybody here today doesn't wait on the day where they're made to, but they decide now that they will bow their knee to the name of Jesus Christ. He's the King. King of kings, Lord of lords, right? So I want us to consider just a couple things this morning as we continue, I believe, our celebration of Easter. 
we got a whole nother year to keep on celebrate and prepare to do it next year. We just keep on and on and on. Every Sunday morning we gather here and we celebrate Easter. Did you know that love has a name? I'm going to give you four quick things this morning. But I'm going to tell you this. And the first one is this, that love has a name. You know what his name is? Jesus. Love has a name. He loved us in His sacrifice. I want us to stop and think about this morning for just a few minutes the fact that Christ left His splendor. Think about where He was at and think about what He left. Uh, the Bible says in Philippians chapter 2, uh, verse 5, that Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, did not consider it robbery to be equal with God, but made Himself of no reputation taking the form of a bondservant and coming in the likeness of men and being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and become obedient to the point of death, even the death of the cross. That phrase there, made himself of no reputation, means that he emptied himself. Our Lord Jesus Christ left the throne of God and he emptied himself to come and to be virgin born and, and to live. The Bible says that he left a realm of all power, of all knowledge, and of all presence for a world that he had to learn how to walk in, that he had to learn how to talk in. It's amazing. Uh, I've got to experience uh, these last couple of days. Uh, what would she say? <laughs> because when Talitha talks, sometimes it's so clear, but there's still a lot of words that are not clear, and I, I've never been too good at baby talk. And so I have to say, what'd she say? What'd she say? And then Juliana, Lord only knows what she's saying. You know, it's, you, you, you can't correct her. You don't know if she's right or wrong. It's just like every single one of us. When Janie was up here, there ain't no telling what Janie could have been telling us. We wouldn't have known, would we? But I guarantee you it's straight from the book. It was good, I guarantee you. He had to learn how to talk. The greatness of the sacrifice of Jesus is found in what He left and what He become. He was God who became man in flesh. The Bible tells us that He increased in wisdom as all the other children, but yet He was beyond all them in wisdom. He hungered where He had never hungered before. He grew tired and needed to sleep. <laughs> we were up at the fish fry Friday night and Talitha was just gone, go and go and go and go and she was sitting there in her seat and, and Lord, if, if uh, either David or Christy hadn't have caught her, she'd have fell plumb out of the chair. She was so tired, she was eating, she was like, yeah. she was going. You ever done that? Anybody? Me? 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 Yeah, I'm sure you did, big boy. <laughs> I, I, have you been so tired you just couldn't go another step? Think about it. He, Jesus never experienced tiredness. But as a man, he was tired and he needed to sleep. He wept and he, and he felt anguish with the deep emotions of a human being. Don't we have some crazy emotions? You and I have so many different kind of emotions. Good emotions, bad emotions. Sometimes it makes us happy and we can't, uh, I, you know, we just get so excited and we can't hide it. I'm about to lose control. Oh, I was thinking about a song. And we get happy, we can't help it. We get sad and we cry. Many of us cry. Some of you like, act like you don't cry. You know, something sad and you got tears coming out of your eyes and allergies. They're terrible this year. I just learned to let her rip. He hungered. He wept. He felt anguish. He had not felt or known these measures as God, but as a man, he knew them. And he had to. He had to because he became man to be merciful and to become that faithful high priest. Jesus is our help. So, so love has a name and 
And Jesus came and, and he, he surrendered and He sacrificed. So He loved us in His sacrifice and He loved us in His surrender. He showed us how to be selfless, how to love others. I'm 54 years old. And I really believe with all my heart that I'm just learning how to love others. I don't know if anybody else has ever experienced that, but the older I get, it seems like I'm learning more and more how much I appreciate getting to love others, but also being loved by others. By this we know love has a name and it's Jesus. But number two, hope has a name. Hope has a name and it's Jesus our hope is found in, in His redemption. The Bible says in Ephesians 1.7, In whom we have redemption through His blood, the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of His grace. In whom, the Bible says there, or in Him, it can be translated. 2 John 1.9 says, He who abides in the doctrine of Christ has both the Father and the Son. So it stands to reason that we must be in Him. Church, are you in Him this morning? The Bible says that in whom or in Him we have redemption. So you better make sure. He will redeem you. He will redeem you. So it stands to reason, as I said, that if we are in Him and He abides in us and, and we in Him, then we're redeemed. And that's so important. So our hope is found in His redemption. Hope has a name and it is found in Jesus Christ through His redemption. But it's also through His revelation because guess what? How do we know this? How would we know this if we didn't have His Word? And Jesus reveals through many different ways. So our hope is found in His revelation. It's, it's true that we're redeemed in His blood but that's how we know it through His Word. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 10, the Bible says, God hath revealed them unto us by His Spirit, for the Spirit searches all things, yea, the deep things of God. Do you know how thankful I am that living right in here is the Holy Spirit? Wow. Could you imagine living without the Holy Spirit in you? I don't want to. It's through Christ's revelation and His redemption that we can find hope. Hope has a name and it's Jesus. Do you have hope this morning? Are you in a place in your life where you lose hope? Well, if you do, Jesus is the, place you, the person you go to. Love has a name. Hope has a name. And it's Jesus. But number three, victory has a name. Guess what victory's name is? Jesus Who's that? Jesus. Victor has his name, and his name is Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. We find in verse 11 these words. It says, this is the stone which you rejected by the builders. This is a, a, a quote from a predicted prophecy found in Psalms 118, verse 22. That, that scripture says, the stone which the builders refused is become the headstone of the corner, the chief cornerstone. The head corner brings the head cornerstone brings us a victory. You know this old song. First verse goes, I heard an old, old story. How our Savior came from glory. How He gave His life on Calvary to save a wretch like me. I heard about His groaning of His precious blood's atoning. Then I repented of my sins and won the victory. And church, we can sing it right now. Oh, victory in Jesus. My Savior forever. He sought me and He bought me with His redeeming blood. He loved me ere I knew Him and all my love is due Him. He plunged me to victory Beneath the cleansing flood. Like that song, don't you? Victory was won by the shed blood of Jesus Christ. Victory. Victory has a name and His name is Jesus. And the victory 
was won because Christ left the throne room of heaven and came and sacrificed and surrendered His life to die on that old rugged cross. Let me tell you something. Our redemption was bought by His blood. His blood was imperative for the atonement. And this, friends, was achieved on that old cross. Jesus' blood is still as powerful now as it was over 2,000 years ago. If the blood of Jesus had not been shed, mankind, you and I, would not have been able to enter into that covenant relationship that we have with Christ. Victory is won by the shed blood, but victory is kept by the resurrection. He won the victory with His shed blood. He keeps the victory that no man could ever win, that could, no man can ever defeat. He holds the keys of death, hell, and the grave. Amen? It's forever defeated. Victory is kept by the resurrection. I read a story um, years ago. A young man was given a job working in the library of a major newspaper. And uh, he was, uh, this particular newspaper paper kept uh, files uh, of famous people. And they kept it in alive files and dead files. That's why they did it. These people are still alive. They're famous. These people are dead. And they are famous. So the story goes that uh, the young fellow was looking through and he come across a file named Jesus Christ. And it was on the dead files. And so he took it from the dead files and he put it over to the live files. Because he's not dead. He's the only... One who claims or claimed that he would rise from the dead and he's the only one who has. Jesus Christ is alive and he's risen from the dead. To anyone looking for his file among the deceased, the angels would say, why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here for he is risen. Love has a name. Hope has a name. Victory has a name. And it's Jesus. But finally, number four, joy has a name. You say, I didn't know all these things had a name. They do. Joy has a name and it's Jesus. In First John, uh, or excuse me, in John 15, 11, Jesus said these words, These things have I spoken unto you that my joy might remain in you and that your joy might be full. The joy that you and I are to have as a child of God, as a Christian, is not joy like Jesus, but Jesus' joy. I don't, listen, my faith is not something similar to what God has given us, but it is the faith that God has given me. It's not a copycat. The joy that you and I have, it's not a copycat. It's not like the Lord's joy. It is the Lord's joy. Because see, the Lord Jesus Christ puts His joy in us. Let's go back and read that. These things have I spoken unto you, that my joy might remain in you. So when we're facing those trials and troubles and those problems, we better stop and think, death has been defeated and the Lord's joy is in me. That my joy might remain in you and that your joy might be full. In Jesus, there is the source of our joy. It is also what keeps us in this joy level stable. And we all know that, folks, it's sufficient. You and I belong to God just as the branch belongs to the vine. And when you start seeing your life connected to the vine, when you start seeing your life, church, listen to me, when you start seeing your life in that relationship, you will find in your heart that there is this miraculous joy that can't be explained, can't be understood. It's why we can face the sad things and still have joy. It's why we can go through tragedy and still have joy, through sickness and still have joy, through death and still have joy. That joy is to remain in us.
So hope, love, victory, joy all has a name. His name is Jesus. Heads bowed and eyes closed this morning. I'm asking you this. Have you found that in your life there is there can be hope? Do you have hope? Do you have love? Do you have victory? Do you have joy? It all can be found in Jesus. When the Philippian jailer saw the faith of Paul and Silas, he asked such an important question. He said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? And at 16, 13, they answered him, said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved, and thy house. Heavenly Father, we come to you right now thanking you so much, Lord, for this opportunity. God, we pray today that everybody in the sound of my voice knows that hope, knows the love, knows the victory, and knows the joy that you speak of in your word. And I pray today that if there's one that does not, that they might make that decision today, either here, right now, or Lord, however you choose to do so. We give all authority. We give you all of our obedience. And we turn this time over to you. In Jesus' name, amen. As we stand and sing.